Hey guys, what's going on? It's Doconic here, and today we're going to be doing a quick video. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible uh, about the blue stone and the red stone and which cards you should probably go for with each of them, assuming you're going to actually per try to purchase the blue stone. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I provide here on my channel, don't forget to hit that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications, that way you get the most recent and up-to-date information about Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle delivered directly to you. Thank you, enjoy the video, and have a great day. Alright, so real quick, uh, the redstone is a stone that allows you to purchase essentially from the Baba Shop any of the original three key attack plus 3,000 leaders. Now I'm going to go over all of them real quick, I'm not going to go over all the information, just know I'm not going to go over the leader skills because you're probably not going to run them as a leader, but just know that, they're, that each one is their own specific attribute types, key plus three, attack plus 3,000 leader. So with that being said, we're just going to go over the passive skills and the link skills to keep it really short. And assuming we have time, I'm going to go over the 70% leads, which I probably should be able to do. Uh, if not, I'll do that as a separate video. Super Saiyan 3, Goku, his TUR form, his Transcendent Ultra Rare form. Passive skill is attack plus 100% for 7 turns at the start of the turn. Uh, his super attack lowers defense. And his link skills are Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Over in a Flash, Limit Breaking Form, and Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of uh, 9500, attack of 8672, and defense of 4623. And he has a 12 key multiplier of 140%. Uh, percent. Um, Next one, Emperor's Devotion, Frieza Full Powered. His super attack is actually immense damage, doesn't have anything additional there, uh, but he has an immense damage multiplier. Uh, his passive skill, Totality of Rage, attack plus 120% when performing a super attack. Prodigy is, is his link skills, Prodigy is universe most malevolent. Nightmare, Strongest Clan in Space, Big Bad Bosses, Over in a Flash, and Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of 9250, attack of 8700, and defense of 4875, with a 12 key multiplier of 130%. Next one is the L oh, not the LR Broly. Super Warrior of Destruction Legendary Super Saiyan Broly. He is a attack all an AOE unit. His passive skill defense reduced to zero and attack plus seven thousand when attacking. And his link skills are Hardened Grudge, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, the Saiyan Lineage, Berserker, and Fierce Battle. His max stats are HP of ninety eight forty three, attack of ninety two forty three, and defense of forty five thirty two. And he has twelve key multiplier of one hundred forty percent. The next one is the Ultimate Gohan, the Intelligence Ultimate Gohan. His super attack is greatly raises attack and causes supreme damage to the enemy. Passive skill is Victor's Fortitude at key plus 5, attack plus 10,000 with key 7 or more. And link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, the Saiyan Lineage, Infighter, Shocking Speed, Power Bestowed by God, Fierce Battle. Max stats are HP of 9306, attack of 8478, and defense of 4708. He has a 12 key multiplier of 40%, and he has a huge attack boost of 30%. So that greatly raises attack, his attack plus 30%. I do not know how long that lasts, though. It doesn't give you about how long it lasts. I don't know if it's turn or whatnot, but anyway. Last but not least is Perfect Cell. The technique Perfect Cell. His super attack doesn't do anything special other than supreme damage. Passive skill, Avatar of Contempt. Attack and defense plus 12% for every key orb obtained. Link skills, Revival, Messenger from the Future, Big Bad Bosses, Kamehameha, Attack of the Clones, Ultimate Life Form, and Fierce Battle. HP is 97.92, attack is 8432, and defense is 6034, and his 12 key multiplier is 140%. Alright, now that you know all the cards and all that they do, let's go over which ones that you should probably try and go for. Now, they're... I mean, they're all, except for maybe the Cell. The Cell, I would say, the is the only one I would not recommend going for, unless you already have all of them and you just want to feed it into your STR Cell. Um, now, if you're a newer player, there's a couple questions you need to ask yourself, all right? One, what 120 lead do you plan on going for? Do you want Vegeta? Do you want, S uh, I mean, the, uh, do you want the Super Saiyan 4 Goku? Uh, do you plan on going a villain's team or a super team? So that's really going to help you to try and figure out what's going on. You need to figure that out first. Um, the, there's three cars in general that I always will tell people to try and go for. Um, one other question, that's what the third card comes into play, is are you a world tournament player? Do you plan on participating in the world tournament? Now, I know a lot of you OG guys who are just watching this video here may cringe a little bit because you kind of know what I'm going to say, but let's go ahead and talk about it, right? So, the World Tournament, I'm just going to get this out of the way because this is the best way that you that I can get him off your list if you don't want him, is the Broly. Now, there are many AoEs at this point in the game. Just off of the top of my head, you have the Strength Cell at 11 key, you have the Arale, Majin Vegeta, both Majin Vegeta is actually LR Majin Vegeta and the Tech Majin Vegeta, and the Tech Majin Vegeta is pretty easy to pull in the Double Rates banner. Um, you have the Xeno Trunks, but he's not optimal. Uh, then you have LR Broly, and you have the Broly that is currently available here. And I believe the Chow Man also. Yeah, the Chow Man, but he hurts himself. 
In terms of world tournaments, though, LR Broly and the Tech Majin Vegeta and the Agility Majin Vegeta are kind of optimal. I would actually go with uh, with um, those three out of anyone, right? Now, the reasoning is because the Tech Majin Vegeta you could nuke with, and he has a really quick attack animation. The Agility Majin Vegeta, uh, you can nuke with him if you want to, but you don't need to because his 18 or more key multiplier does enough damage to take everyone out. And the best one, obviously, is the LR Broly because he does a double AoE when you get uh, between 12 to 17 key. Here's the thing, though. If you are a brand new player and you really want to focus on the World Tournament, the Broly might not be a bad idea, assuming you could take on his event and get his medals. Now, remember, you can go up against the physical event and you can get seven medals at once, and it, he only requires ten medals to get Doken Awakened. Now, he's an AoE. He's not the most optimal AoE. In terms of damage, though, outside of the LRs, he does the most damage without a nuke. He does more damage than Tech Majin Vegeta. I know because I have him at, both of them at Super Attack 10. I brought them to the World Tournament, and this Broly does do more damage. So you could use him if you're looking for the damage output and you want to run on the World Tournament. He also makes other events, I believe 18-3 for Baba Gem grinding, really, really viable. So you might want to consider him. If you are not planning on going on the World Tournament, then cross him off your list. I would cross him and cross that cell off of your list. Those are two cards that I would not recommend going for. One thing to keep in mind, though, is though there's no confirmation, we might, we might be getting the World Tournament coming around for the two-year celebration. And with that, we might be able to also get another gem. So you can keep that in consideration. If that's a thing, you can get this Broly. And if you get this Broly, then you can go and use his AoE to try and grind out the World Tournament. So that way you can get that other red gem. It'll kind of benefit you there, but just take that into consideration. I'm not saying that you need to go for it. Um, the next one on the list, um, I'm not going to go over the top two that I'm going to talk about, but the next one we're going to talk about is that Ultimate Gohan. Uh, that Ultimate Gohan's cool. He's not horrible by any means. Um, he's just outdated. You're not going to really use him that much. You may use him when the Int Gogeta comes out, but even at that point, you're not going to use him too often. Uh, I, I just, you know, I, I don't recommend him being a top pick if you don't have any other intelligence and you're looking for a good mono intelligence team. He is definitely very viable to have on that intelligence team. But personally, I'm just not going to throw him on a top tier list uh, of the top, top choices that you can go. I would still stand by that Broly if you want that World Tournament or if you're really lacking an AoE and you want one. Uh, this Gohan would fall, I would say, on equal grounds with him depending on what you're looking for. Now that leaves the top two because we're going to jump right into that. The top two, obviously, if you you know if you've been following me here, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku and the Full Power Frieza. Now, I know some of you are going to be arguing, Delconic, what are you talking about? Of course the Full Power Frieza is better than that Goku. Well, yeah, you know what, that, that's definitely true. But, I mean, in, in what way? Okay, yes, he does have an immense damage modifier, and his attack is 120% when performing a super attack. That's a freaking amazing, and he does hit hard. I have him at super attack 10. I have, I think, two or three dupe has unlocked. He crits, and yeah, you know what? He's in for about 600,000 on average, you know? Like five, about 500 to 600,000 on average with the amount of dupes I have in him. Um, so he's definitely not a bad unit to have. I would recommend do it for hard hitters. Here's the thing, though. Though he's a good villain, he is decent on a villain's team. I mean, he has Nightmare, Big Bad Bosses, and Fierce Battle, which are three really good links to have on a villain's team. The problem, though, is, you know, he's just not that ideal. I mean, if he, if he had um, Fear and Faith, that might make him a little bit more viable. Uh, but, you know, there are other better villains that you can run in the future. The other, the other thing is that, you know, benefit. I'm not trying to talk him down at all. The other benefit to him is, though, he links super, super well with the physical Korra. But that's what you need to take into consideration. Do you plan on pulling on the physical Korra banner? Do you plan on running a mono physical team? If not, he might not be for you. But in terms of sheer damage output, if that's what you're looking for, just sheer damage output, this Frieza is definitely going to be good for you. Now, before we, you know, I'm not going to end it there on that Frieza, but let's go ahead and take a look at that Goku now. Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Are you pulling for the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta? Well, if you are, he is not the most optimal member of the uh, Mono Agility Super Teams, but holy crap, he will hit hard. Remember, he has a passive skill of attack plus 100% for 7 turns from the start of turn. He has a 12 key multiplier of 140%. Now, if you guys aren't aware, now I'm just going to go do a little bit of comparison here. Um, we have the combination of Brain and Power Super Saiyan Trunks GT that's supposed to come out with the Super Saiyan 4 banner, right? Now, this is the one that's going to be available on the, on the actual Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta banner. He's the Trunks from GT. 
He has a 12 key multiplier of 135%, and his passive skill is attack plus 100 when performing a super attack. Now, supreme damage, attack plus 100%, and 135 key multiplier. Let's compare that to the Goku, who has supreme dam damage multiplier, attack plus 100%, and a 140 12 key multiplier. I mean, granted, his is only for 7 turns, but, I mean, that's 7 turns of him being on the field, not 7 turns of 1, you know, 2, 3, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, he needs to be on the field, the actual rounds need to go for 7 turns with him there. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look by comparison. In terms of damage output, this guy, this Trunks, this Trunks with 100% on a supreme, a supreme damage with 135 is doing about the same amount of damage as the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan with a 70% attack modifier on this passive skill. And he has 130% 12 key multiplier. They're both hitting for about the same. Now I believe that's on SA1, so he probably will be doing a little bit more at SA10. But I'm just taking that, just take that into consideration. He is doing it with 100% with 5% less 12 key multiplier. He is doing the same amount of damage as an immense damage modifier card with a 70%. So this Goku is definitely, Super Saiyan 3 Goku is definitely, definitely, don't underrate him at all. He is a super good card. And if you're planning on going for the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta and you don't have him, I would recommend going for him. But now let's look at an opt. The, that's in terms of their mono teams. Respectively, these two on their mono teams are freaking really, really good. You know, there are cards you can replace the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Frieza, at this point in the game, is still a staple for his mono team. He is still really good on a hero's team, but ideally, both of these cards would not be run on a respective hero's and villain's team if you had all the optimal cards. So, that one is really up to you. Personally, me, my thing is what I'm doing. I'm going for another full power freezer because I just need one more to unlock his two path. And if I get a second one, uh, like a second uh, redstone, if we get one for the tournament, I want to go for the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. That's just my thing. That's just what I plan on doing because, you know, I want to make sure that those two cards are buffed up for when I use them, if I use them. And remember, I mean, I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just trying to help guide you guys to figure it out, you know. So it really does come down to those three. You need to ask yourselves what you have. It also comes down to what's in your box. But that's going to come when I talk about the 70% leaders. And actually, you know, because I rambled on for 12 and a half minutes, I won't be going over the 70% leaders in this video. But stay tuned because I'll probably, I'll probably release that one tomorrow at some point. Or actually, you know, I'll probably do it tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I want to make sure I get you the Super Saiyan 4 um, Vegeta and the Super Saiyan 4 Goku card overviews and event reviews. I'll probably just do that in one mass video just to get it out of the way. So that way it's all there in one spot for you. Uh... Anyway, yeah, so those three cards, the AoE Broly, if you don't have one and you plan on going for the World Tournament, he will not remember this, he won't be able to run on a Super Saiyan 4 Goku team, you cannot use him on an LR Broly team because it's the same exact card. But if you want that AoE and you don't have one, Broly would probably be a good way to go for you if you plan on being a World Tournament player. The other two that I recommend is the Frieza Full Power and the Super Saiyan 2 Goku. And at that point, you need to ask yourself, do you plan on running um, a villain's team, a hero's team? If you plan on running a hero's team and you're planning on pulling on Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, then the agility Goku will definitely be the way you want to go. If you plan on going for a villain's team and you still kind of want that Vegeta, that might be a little bit more difficult and that might be more of a toss-up for you. Also take into consideration what's in your current box and what you have available to you. I get it if you want to try and use this to start building the cards that you don't have. That might be a good way to go too, but, you know, play to your strengths. That's what I'm going to say. Play to your strengths. Play to what you know, what you can do, and, you know, go from there. Um, I, I hope that helped you guys out. It's not going to be a perfect answer, but I hope that helped guide you to the right direction to find out what cards you want to use or what cards you should get using the redstone. Stay tuned. Hit that sub button because I'm going to be going over the blue stone in a little bit. Uh, again, I don't know if it's going to come up tonight or if it's going to go up tomorrow. I'm going to post it at some point really soon before the event releases. So that way you guys can at least have some guidance on which one of those you should try and grab. But thank you. I appreciate you taking the time here. I hope that was informative. Hit that sub button if you're new here, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.